Hi, I'm Alex. Welcome to my channel. And we're going to dive right into our video today because this might be a long one. Uh, it is part of a, essentially a two-part video where I break down a couple of my processes. And the first one we're going to be looking at is my how I create my characters. I have vaguely gone over this in another video when I talked about how to name your characters or at least my process for doing it, but I thought I'd put out a video that's more in depth. For this to give examples, I am actually going to be creating or going over the creation of one of the characters or multiple depending on how this goes. Um, for another story I'm working on. This one isn't very formulated in my head yet, but we'll see what happens. I have my laptop here off to the side and I will be doing all of my information gathering and character creation in a program called Campfire. A little clunky, but I really like it. Uh, if you would like me to go over all the programs I've used for writing so far because I've used a few <laughs> to varying degrees of success let me know and I'll make that a thing at some point but let's get started so the first step in my character creation process is the idea um, a lot of my stories start with the idea of a character and then I have to build the world around them in another video I've mentioned that I get a lot of my ideas from music videos. This particular story was heavily inspired by a couple of music videos from Vix, which is a K-pop group. Not stolen, just inspired. Because I'm pretty sure they didn't intend for the storyline that my brain came up with watching their videos. Now, if you're someone who comes up with their story idea first, it is very possible that your characters might actually be inspired by what you need for your story. So in this particular instance, I have three main characters who are all angels. The idea started with that, these angelic beings. The second step in my process, which is where the computer and everything starts coming in, is to fill in any obvious details also a cat. Hi. So if you hear her, that's, she's over here being a nuisance. So what I mean by obvious details is there are always some things that I already know about the characters going in. Like in this case, obviously they're angelic. They're going to have to present as some kind of age. They're whatever. For me, the things that I generally know right off the bat are age, gender, relationships, and at least part of their personality. Knowing those things for me leads into the heavy research part of coming up with these characters. So I've started filling in a couple things for the three main characters in this. I'm only going to go over one of them. Now I will admit I have done a little bit of research already, but that was because I needed to know it. I need, there were things I needed to know in order to fill in the obvious information. The little bits that I knew. Obviously, I knew they were angels. I needed names. But I knew I wanted to use real names. Or real angel <laughs> Real angel names. I knew. So, because I knew that, and, and that's something I wanted to fill in fairly early... I just went and found a list of angel names and picked angels that were mentioned but never had anything associated to them. I barely call that research because that's one of those cases where I was just picking a name that sounded good. But I did know I wanted to pick names that didn't have any major associations with, with them like Michael or Gabriel did. One of the angels, the one we're working on, is Nithael. Something else I knew is I wanted them for, to be from different orders. I will have to pull it up if I if you want it in here, but um, there was a person a while, a, like 1800s, earlier than that, I'm not entirely sure, but 
he kind of broke down angels into nine orders based on the ranking. And I knew I didn't want any high level angels to be kidnapped. I mean, like, you're going to notice if a dominion or a seraphim goes missing. But an angel and a principality? Not so much. Principality is higher, higher than an archangel, but they're still pretty low on the totem pole. An angel is just an angel. Half of them are guardian angels anyway. No one's going to notice they go missing right, if they go missing right away. So I knew I wanted to pull from that lower branch. Nithael happens to be a principality. I thought it would be a good dynamic. The other thing I knew right off the bat is I wanted them after what they go through to go kind of into hiding from everyone, both sides, everything. But I knew that when they did that, I wanted them to pick names. That's going to be a research heavy thing because they're picking names after something rather traumatic. So those names need to mean something to them. I also knew that they were going to need physical ages or at least physical form ages. And I wanted to keep them in their the 20s, 30s range. So Nithail happens to be 22 because despite being a principality, I wanted them to look on the younger range, even though they're considered a, basically they're like in charge of everyone below them. I decided because somewhere in my head, yes, um, generally in the Bible, I believe, I don't know if it's just the Christian one or if it's the Judaic one as well. I'm not really familiar with either research, but angels are often presented as male, beautiful, but male. That being said, that's actually inaccurate. If you look at several of the upper branches of angels, they're monstrous looking things. I believe prince, principalities are dominions. One of them are just like wheels covered in eyes. The Renaissance is really when they started making angels look pretty. But at any rate, um, I kind of like the idea that despite whatever form they take, angels are androgynous. So while one angel might lean more into a masculine look and one might, I wanted them to kind of still be that androgynous and then they'll just gender themselves based on how they choose to look. Yes, that is partially inspired by good omens, but we're not going to discuss that. <laughs> um, but Nithael is purely androgynous. Um, they don't choose to look more one way or the other. Those are the details that to me were obvious. I will admit that step two, the obvious details does does tend to blend into step three, which is the conscious decisions. So for me, conscious decisions are usually, where's the character from? What are their family like? This is where I tend to solidify their personality. And if appropriate for the story I'm writing, if they have any special gifts, this is where I decide what they are. So for this story and this character, there are a couple of decisions I need to make. I never, this is one of those cases where the character did not come with a personality built into them already. And I need to work that out because for me, a lot of my, or a lot of my stories are character driven. And if the character's not good, the story's just not going to be worth reading. Oh, so I apologize if I've been hitting this camera the entire time. I am not graceful with multitasking these things. Also, my table's unsteady. So we're going to start with the personality, I think, because that's kind of the important part. Quick thing about Campfire. A lot of people say it's clunky and it kind of is, but you know what? I think for how organized it makes everything for me, it's just a better alternative. I still mind dump everything into OneNote just so I can have it, but I kind of like campfire for organizing things. 
and it has a timeline thing you can make. One of my stories requires a timeline and I can make it in this without purchasing a separate program. Because Nithael is a principality and it kind of puts them in charge over other angels. Yeah, you would think archangels are actually at the top. No, 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 no. Archangels are like the second from the bottom and the, the hierarchy. With Nithael having a kind of position of power, I want them to hold more of a, not haughty, but definitely a more controlled, like self-control. So I think we're going to start there and I will actually go off and do that and I will get back to you with the next part. Okay, I've got some base personality traits in. Um, that'll be good enough for now. A lot of that will actually get filled in later in the research portion um, and a later step. So the next step in my character creation process is research. A lot of research. It is the longest part of this process, but it also happens to be my favorite because I love researching things. I love finding out stuff. It's a lot of times, and by a lot, I mean like, a lot like it's usually the first thing I research tends to be names I find names to be very important so in this case the first thing I'd be looking up is the name they take Nath Ugh. Nithael takes while in hiding but other things that I would then research are their appearance uh, I again I went over that whole thing in my naming characters video, or at least I went over the reasoning is the same as the reasoning for why you pick certain names. Um, but briefly, you know, if I had a character that was supposed to be from Ireland during the 1800s, there's a general acknowledgement of what the average person looked like not to say that there weren't it, at no point should you be bound by oh the average person looked like this if you're looking for a non-contested at any rate that's a whole discussion but general appearances I'll research based on where they're from there's a bunch of things that can be researched depending on your story so in this case I'm going to be researching a name that Nithael will take while in hiding. And I'll probably pick some physical attributes for them. And so I will do that and we will I will be back when that is done. Okay, I'm back. I've got some information down for my research. There is a lot more Literally, to do a full character, it will take me about two hours of research, but I do have a good name. Um, I actually went with Zilla, which is Hebrew for shade. I kind of wanted to stay in that background of like Hebrew names just to kind of keep it contained to a very specific mythology. One last step in my character creation process. Hey, that is fill in questionnaires. This is not for everyone. Let me be the first to say that. I am a huge fan of character sheets. I am the crazy person that will spend three days filling out like a hundred question questionnaire about my characters it for me it forced me to come up with a lot of things that I wouldn't have come up with and certainly things that I would have never thought of on my own I don't use half that information keep that in mind half the stuff that I come up with to fill these out never sees the light of day but I've got it if anyone ever asks me 
And that's what matters. <laughs> I have dragged this on long enough for all of you. So let me do a quick summation of this whole thing. First step is an idea. The second step is to fill in the obvious details. These are the details that come to your mind first when you think of your character. Third step is all of your conscious decisions, their background, any relationships you want them to have, whether that be family or otherwise. Fourth step is research. This is generally where names come in, build, locational information that's required that you need to look up. Fifth step, questionnaires. Fill them in. They're fun. <sighs> so that is my process. I do this with every character I create. Um, some of the steps kind of blend together or get mixed around a little bit depending on just how much of the character I think of beforehand. But that's the general gist of it. Let me know in the comments below if you have a specific process you go through for your characters or if you just kind of wing it. I will see you in my next video. Bye!